Yep, look at this. This is our eclipse. This is our eclipse. It's it's already it's also past totality. This this is what we get. Can't see shit in this place. Good morning, muffins. Well, that was disappointing, I guess. Anyways, I got to do what I got to do. That's right. I code a simulator for this. To do this, I first gather astronomical data from NASA Horizons. They can provide data for the position of the sun and moon in the sky in a CSV table. I made API calls to request data table with an interval of 5 minutes. Here I gather the azimuth and elevation angle of the two bodies and their rates of change. Now, similar to the star sky video if you have seen it, azimuth and elevation tells you where an object is in the sky. They are like the longitude and latitude, but for the sky. However, unlike right ascension and declination, they are relative to the observer's position on Earth. Between every 5 minute data points, I can interpolate using Ermite interpolation, which gives a polynomial that matches the data point as well as their derivatives. This ensures a smooth interpolation and is the reason why we want the rates of change. Then we can convert them to Cartesian coordinates using these equations. Remember, y is the up-down axis here. Then, as always, I create a VR scene using A-frame. For a bare-bone simulation, we just need the sky, Sol, and Luna. Using the actual distance between Sol or Luna to Earth on the day of the eclipse, which I can gather by requesting a different data table, as well as their actual size, I can set up the items in the VR world. Uh, yep, they are quite small when viewed like this. That is why I'm adding a zoom and scope sliders for desktop and mobile users. After that, I need to dim the sky according to how much the sun is covered. Also, remember that due to the atmosphere, Luna is not a dark blob in the sky, so we should match Luna's color to the sky to create a hole in the sun effect. So, I need an equation to calculate the area of two circles intersecting. After a bit of digging, here we have it. Thanks Wolfram MathWorld. So, we can just linearly interpolate the color of daytime sky color and the sky color of the dusk to create the dimming effect. Finally, it's the fun part. You know how when the sun is fully eclipsed, the corona shows up. Sadly, I don't get to see it this time around in 24. So, I'll recreate it using the bane of all game and web developers. GLSL shaders. I first convert the positions in the shader to polar coordinate. Then I stole this code for generating 2D Perlin noise, like all good developers should. I use the radio angle as one axis to create the rays of beams, then use time as the other to create the flickering effect. Then I added an exponential decay on the distance axis to dissipate it, and I stacked three Perlin noises on top of each other. Finally, I smoothened the edge between 0 and 2 pi in the angle to eliminate the ugly rigid line. Yeah, you can really see I had fun learning this. And we're done! I do wish I had more time for more features such as the dawn dusk glow, the uh, diamond ring, and selecting custom location on earth, etc. But I gotta make do to get this video and the project out. I should add them later when I have more time. Anyways, go play with it yourself. See the eclipse in full without clouds if you missed it, like me. As always, the code is open source under Numerical Workshop. Well, that's it for today. If you like the video, leave a like. If you don't, leave a comment telling me how I can improve. And subscribe if you want to see more. See you nada!